This right here is my newest fermenter, the Brewtools Mini Uni Plus, and it's a fully jacketed, highly customizable conical stainless steel tank, and the best part is it starts at around $500. Today, I'm putting it to the test. Will it maintain temps? Will it fall off the wall? Let's find out. For this beer, I'm starting with some really soft spring water and I'm adjusting the water profile by adding some gypsum and some canning salt for flavor and mouthfeel. This step isn't necessarily required, but it definitely helps, especially if you want to make something great. For the grain bill, I'm stoked to be trying out some more great malts from Mecca Grade Estate Malt. I have 80% Gateway, which is an undermodified wind malt, and 20% Rimrock, which is a Vienna-style rye malt. As I add the grains, I'm also adding a few handfuls of rice hulls to help offset the sticky rye malt and make sure the wort flows well through the grain bed. Once everything is nice and saturated, I let it rest for 5-10 to 10 minutes before turning on the recirculation. Now, since I'm using under-modified malt and I'll be doing an overnight mash, here's what my mash schedule looks like. I mashed in at 104 Fahrenheit and I'll rest there for 15 minutes for what's called a beta glucan rest. This step should help degrade the high glucan levels in the rye malt and make sure the wort flows well through the grain bed. From there, I'm moving up to 122 Fahrenheit for a 15 minute protein rest to break down the protein in these really cool malts. And finally, I'm moving up to 145 for a 2 hour beta rest. And remember, I'm doing an overnight mash so all of this will happen automatically over the next few hours. So all I need to do is clean up a bit and I'll pick this up in the morning. By the next morning, my mash had dropped to about 94 Fahrenheit, but of course, spent several hours last night in the beta amylase range. From here, I'm moving up to 158 Fahrenheit for a 20 minute alpha rest, followed by a mash out at 170 Fahrenheit. And just like that, we're ready to yank these grains, but before I do that, I'm pulling 3 to 400 milliliters of wort into a flask that I'll use in just a minute after cooling down in the fridge. And because I'm still working on my new sparge water setup, I went with a cold water sparge, which should work just fine. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is this is going to be a raw saison, which means I won't be boiling this beer. Instead, I'm bringing it back up to 170 Fahrenheit after the cold water sparge for a quick whirlpool. While that heats up, I'm preparing a vitality starter using the wort sample that I pulled, some bottle dregs from my favorite local saison producer that I grew and stored in this little jar, and some liquid yeast from Omega. This starter will spin on the stir plate until the wort is cooled and ready for the yeast. Now it's time for the first and only hop addition. Here's 56 grams of Eleni and 28 grams of Citra, and right away I'm going to start sanitizing my transfer hose by recirculating the hot wort through it and back into the top of the kettle. After a 15 minute whirlpool, it's time to transfer the hot wort straight into the Mini Uni Plus using what's called the no chill method. Because I haven't cooled the wort, the hops will continue to extract and add some bitterness to this raw saison. Now I'll kick on the glycol chiller and pitch the yeast when it reaches 68 degrees Fahrenheit and then let the temperature free rise as fermentation kicks off. We interrupt this programming to bring you a special message from our friends at Anvil. 
This is the Anvil Brewing Pump XP, a whisper quiet brewing pump capable of moving six gallons per minute, and I can't wait to put it to use in the new brewery. As I get to use it and know it, I'll let you know what I think. Big thanks to Anvil for sending it out. Now, back to the video. If you saw the video about this new fermenter, you might remember this crazy contraption that I put together. For this fermentation, I started with the PRV locked open to let the yeast breathe during the most active part of fermentation. In just three days, this beer went from an original gravity of 1031 to a final gravity of 1.00. At that point, I closed the PRV, dropped the temp, and began conditioning at 15 psi. After about a month and a half in the tank, this beer is ready to serve. Let's see how it turned out. This raw Saison is pouring a beautiful yellow-orange color with a super tight and fluffy white head. In the aroma, I get clove and citrus and all that complicated Saison spice. For a 4% beer, it has a pretty substantial mouthfeel and the flavor starts fairly malt forward and then the hop flavor kicks in. There's basically no hop bitterness and I get notes like orange marmalade, strawberry, and pineapple before it finishes with some spicy rye. It could use a little bitterness, but I'm proud of this one. This was a somewhat technical brew and it turned out great thanks to both the equipment and the process I decided to use. The overnight step mash in the Brewtools B40 couldn't be more convenient, and the Mini Uni Plus is killer. First off, it's perfect for no chill, but of course, make sure you don't seal it up while hot without adding some positive pressure or you could potentially collapse your tank. It maintained temps like a champ. My tilt hydrometer worked fine through the jacket, it held steady pressure during conditioning, and I didn't feel limited by the number of ports at any time. That said, I did have to choose between dumping yeast and using the tank heater, and I'm glad I went with the tank heater on this one because I had some issues with the heat in the brewery and it saved the beer. On top of the gear, I'm really stoked about these mecha grade malts and the overnight mash, the no boil, and the no chill made this an easy and enjoyable beer to brew. My name's Dan, this is Hops and Gnarly, Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon.